Hello William G. Axley and welcome back. It's a new term, it's your summer term and welcome back. I hope that you've had an amazing holiday over Easter. I wonder what kind of things you've been up to. If I was in school I'd be asking you, uh, but I should just have to guess the kind of things that you've been doing over Easter. Did you take part in Explorers which happen all over the village and over 250 families got involved in Explorers so maybe you were one of them and hopefully you enjoyed exploring our village and exploring the Easter story as well. Well we have had Easter, we were thinking about Holy Week before Easter and those other stories and we're going to think about some of the stories after Easter and by that I mean those stories of when Jesus rose again on the Easter Sunday. Now I wonder if you had any chocolate for Easter. I did. I wonder if you still got any chocolate left after Easter. Amazingly I do which is quite rare. And I love our chocolate Easter eggs because when you open them they are empty and you might think that's the worst surprise ever. But as Christians we remember that that empty tomb on that Easter day was the most amazing news because it meant that Jesus had come back to life and was going to be with his disciples. Now we loved being back in church over Easter. We were able to be there for two Sundays and one day in Holy Week, the week before Easter. But our church building is closed again now because we're going to have some building work done. So we're going to have some new toilets put in, we're going to have a new room put in and a new kitchen area. So we can't be in church at the moment and so we are doing everything by video and internet at the moment as you were previously. But we're looking forward to when we can go back into church slightly later in the year and seeing the building work that is happening. But we love coming together on Easter Sunday and being able to thank God for the amazing news that Jesus had risen. But you have to remember that these stories took place over 2,000 years ago. That is a long time ago. And in those times, they didn't write down things as we do. They didn't have the internet to pass on news. They didn't even really have paper, pen and postal system. Or they did send things by people who would travel and take things to other people. They didn't have planes, they didn't have any of those things. And so people didn't always know what was going on quite as quickly as we seem to know everything that goes on. So a lot of the stories at this time were passed down by word of mouth. So people would tell the story to each other and they would pass it down through different generations of family. And so we have to remember in these stories, actually they weren't written down until quite a few years later, maybe even up to sort of 30, 40 years later. So we have to remember these stories, the stories that would have been told to people and then passed on and passed on. Perhaps as you pass on news around your school playground or in your classroom. So we are looking at these stories as well in church, although not in church, obviously, but online. And we're looking at the, and we're calling them three different titles. And the first one is, and so what happened? And the second title is, and then? And the third title is, he did what? Because these stories are all really surprising stories. And we sometimes get to know them a little bit too well. But they are stories that we should be surprised and amazed about because Jesus came back to life. So there are stories that I imagine people going, he did what? What happened? And just talking to each other and trying to understand these weird and wonderful stories. The story we're going to talk about today is one of my favourite Easter stories. And it happens um, probably either the same day as Jesus came back to life or the next day. And it happened as people were walking and talking together. Now, I don't know if you like walking, perhaps you love going for a walk, perhaps you really enjoyed the Explorer Trail if you took part in it. I go three times when I'm not too keen on walking and others where I really like to walk. At the moment, I really love to walk around our village. I try and get my 10,000 steps in if I can. And I've done, as I've told you before, I've done some really long charity walks and 20 mile plus walks, um, but I'm not quite that fit anymore. But I've been for a walk this morning with a lady from our church, because that's one way that I can meet with people, is walk with them and talk with them. So I wonder what kind of footwear you put on if you're going for a walk. Well, I've just come back from a walk and I've put on my really comfortable favourite boots. I love these, but they're getting a bit hot for this time of year because they've actually got a kind of fur lining. That's what I wore to walk this morning. I wonder if you'd walk 
in a sandal. Would you walk in that? Some people do, and they walk in flip flops. I cannot do that. I can't. I can only wear this kind of thing if I need to wear a dress or something like that for an event. I'm not very good at doing long distances in footwear like this. Uh, there's other footwear. These I love because they are sparkly. I don't know if you can see that well on camera. Um, but they're not that comfortable for wear for any long period. But they're quite sparkly. I also, and I'm going to have to reach down at this point because I put them down because they're still quite muddy. I also have whoop, some proper walking shoes and I have walking boots, which are a bit more sturdy than these. I have had these for a good few years and I might possibly, looking at the bottom of them, need to get some new ones because when I walk, I walk quite a long way sometimes. But I had to put them on the floor because they are still covered in mud from the last walk that I did. And so we do when we do any kind of walk, we might plan and prepare. We might think about what footwear do we put on? What do we need to do depending on what we're going to be on? So if we're on pavement, it's different to if we're going through a field or through grass or up a hill. Not that there are many hills around here. But we have to think about preparing, we have to think about getting ready. We might need to take some things with us. So we're going a long walk. Do we need to take some food with us? Do we need to take a drink with us? Will we need anything else? So we plan and prepare when we're doing any kind of long walk. Well, today I've just walked around the village with a lady and it's a beautiful sunny day. It's been lovely to walk and talk with her. And the friends that we're going to talk about today in this story from Luke. I don't know how much preparation they did. I don't think they did very much. Because what they did is they walked back from Jerusalem back to their home in a place called Emmaus. And this story is best known as the Emmaus Road story. And I love this story so much. And they'd just seen all the events that had gone on in Jerusalem. So they had seen on that Monday Thursday, they'd heard about that supper that Jesus had taken with his friends. When he took the bread and he took the wine and he shared that with his friends. That's what happened on Monday Thursday. And then after Monday Thursday, we have Good Friday. And on Good Friday, we remember that Jesus died on the cross because he loves each one of us. So that's what we remember on Good Friday. And we remember that Jesus was buried by a friend in a tomb. And tombs looked a bit, a little bit more like caves then, but he was buried in that cave. And we remember on Easter Day, that first Easter Sunday, those friends of Jesus went to the tomb. They went to prepare his body. But what they found was just some strips of cloth there. And Jesus was alive and he met with his disciples. Now, what would you be thinking at this point? I think I would be trying to make sense of all that had happened. I'd be trying to kind of work out what had happened and why had it happened and had it actually happened. Because the two people in the story today, we don't know they'd actually seen Jesus come back to life. But they are walking and talking. So they're walking from Jerusalem where everything happened and they're walking to Emmaus. It's a distance of about seven miles. So it would be like walking to Peterborough, basically for us from Yaxley. So I walked to Peterborough. So we might want to pack some things like a drink if we were going. But these two friends, they're not named as being the disciples. Remember the 12 disciples? And by this point, there are only 11 disciples because Judas has left them, because Judas betrayed Jesus. And so there are these 11 disciples, but we're not told that these are two of those. We know that one of them is called Clopas. We don't know what the other is called. And they're walking this road. Now, remember, roads then would have been dusty dirt tracks. It wouldn't be nicely tarmacked. And they were walking and talking and just trying to make sense. And I wonder when things happen to you, do you just try to talk to your friends and just try to make sense of what has happened? That's what I do. I pick up the phone to a friend and I talk over what's happened with them and try and make sense of it. So the story tells that they were walking. They were talking to each other about what had happened, about the fact that Jesus had died on the cross, about this news that he had now been resurrected and was alive again. And they were just trying to make sense of it. Now suddenly, into this walk came another person. Now if you've walked on the fence or walked around Yaxley, yeah, so you'll pass people all the time. But this person just suddenly came amongst them and asked them what were they talking about. And so they start to explain to this person that all that had happened in Jerusalem, the events of the Maundy Thursday, the Good Friday, and the news that Jesus had risen. And this person walks with them 
and listened for a little while and asked them some questions. I wonder if you know who this person is. I think you might just know. But these two people don't know who this person is. And so they keep walking and talking. And eventually this person says to them, have you not understood all that you have been told and taught? Now, I think that would make me think quite hard if I was asked that question. And they reply that no, they, they don't understand. And so this person who is with them starts to teach them everything that has gone before. So if we think about the whole of our Bible, or those 66 books, they start to unpack and make sense and teach and tell about all those things that have happened. Those events in our Old Testament leading up to our New Testament and Jesus' life and his death and his resurrection. Well, these people who are with this person are so interested in what they're saying. And they walk the seven miles in no time at all. It probably takes about two, two and a half hours to do seven miles today on the roads that we have. And they suddenly find that they're coming to Emmaus, the place where they live, somewhere towards night time. It was getting dark. That person with them goes on to just carry on walking. But these two, Clopas and his friend, say, come and spend the night with us. And so the person goes into the house with them and they sit down to have a meal. Now let's think back to the meal that we know. Let's think back to that Maundy Thursday. To that bread and that wine that was shared. And so they set out a meal to have with this person as they listen to them teaching. And this person asks if they can say a prayer. And the friends say, yeah, that's absolutely fine. And so the person takes the food that is there, that is given to them. They say a prayer, they thank God for it. And then they break the bread. Now, in that moment of praying and breaking the bread, those two people realise who this person is. Who do you think it might be? Yes. It was Jesus. He was walking and talking and teaching and telling them and unpacking all that had gone before. And I wonder whether those people were there and remembered Jesus breaking the bread at the Last Supper, whether they'd heard stories of it. But something happened in those few moments and they knew that this person was Jesus. But Jesus didn't hang around with them. Jesus disappeared at that point. Some of these stories are so strange. But once these people knew who it was, they couldn't keep that within themselves. They had to go and tell the other people. And so having walked from Jerusalem to Emmaus, they then got up and they ran back to Jerusalem, we are told, because they were so excited. And they went and found those disciples and they told them that they had seen Jesus and Jesus had eaten with them and talked to them. How amazing is that news? How exciting is that news? Jesus was with them. I love this story so much. And so I imagine these conversations going on as they try and share that news really excitedly, as the disciples try to listen and understand what has happened. But this is one of the appearances when Jesus shows himself to people. He comes back and he shows that he is alive to people. We're going to think about a couple more over the next couple of weeks. But I wonder what questions you have from this story. Maybe lots of questions because it's a strange story in many ways. But it's a story that tells that Jesus was back to life and had come back to be with his friends and those people who knew him. I often talk to you about the colours in church and if we were in church at the moment, our colour would be white because white is a colour of celebration in the church. And so we are celebrating the events of Easter. And Easter goes on for quite a long time in the church. It goes on until Pentecost, which happens this year in May. And we'll talk more about that a little bit later um, in the term. But it happens in May. And so we have a long season in the church. It's called Easter season, when we remember the events of Easter. We remember these amazing stories. And we remember that Jesus has come back to life. And so we're going to have a moment of quiet as you just maybe think about this story and reflect on maybe what it means for you today. It's a story that tells that Jesus is still with us today.
So let's take a few moments of quiet and then I will pray. And so let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for Easter. We thank you for the amazing news that Jesus is risen. And we give thanks to you for this amazing story today. The story of walking and talking together. And suddenly these people understanding. And so we pray in this time that as we look at these stories, we will know that you are always walking with us. You always want us to talk to you. And you always want us to listen to what you're saying as well. Help us in this time to learn more about you, more about who Jesus is, and to learn that he is still with us today. So be with us in this term, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope that you have had a great first week back at school with your friends and getting used to school again. You've had some lovely weather, so I hope you have some great playtimes as well. I'll be back with you again next week. So take care of yourselves and stay safe. Bye.